no matter how good the selection process is, there's always going to be guys that seem to be deserving that just don't get in there anyway. And a lot of it has to do with what we talked about earlier with this rule that Major League Baseball has where every team has to have a representative. Uh, Sean, I want to take kind of a uh, go on a little tangent here with you for a moment. Do you think Mm. that Major League Baseball should nix that rule? Should we get past the point of every team having to have a representative? Um... I don't know because it's I, and this is so tough because I think ultimately from like if I'm being unbiased like no probably not because this game doesn't mean anything and it's ultimately for the fans but the sure. reality of it in my mind is also that like if you're going to treat it like that then stop putting all-star games on all of flame, fame plaques like stop counting that as something that 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 makes players better than other players by their all-star accomplishments yeah. when guys are getting robbed of that simply because of this rule was simply because Pete Alonzo needs to be in the all-star game because no one else needs now. And not necessarily that Christian Walker necessarily hundred percent would have been that substitution. But for example, um, like th- those kinds of things are preventing guys who deserve to have that recognition and would ultimately change how people look at them in, in the context of baseball history. Um, like it, it, like if that's going to be a qualifier, then, just the most deserving player needs to be there regardless of what team they play for. Um, so I understand both perspectives of it, uh, but I think I kind of lean towards like it, it's, it's, it sucks when you're a fan of a team that sucks and you have no one at the all-star <laughs> game. Like that just sucks. Um, last year it was sure. cool when Joe Mantiply was there. Like it made the all-star game more interesting for D-backs fans. Um, and I ultimately think that's the most important thing. Um, so I guess I kind of lean towards keeping the rule, but I'm really, I'm really not passionate about it, passionate one way or the other. I would make, I would make the argument that if you are a fan of a team, that's not very good. It is, it is a little bit more, it is bizarrely more painful and embarrassing for you to have an all-star representative that doesn't deserve to be there and everyone knows it, right? Like if you're a fan of the Detroit Tigers right now and Michael (laughs) Lorenzen is is your all-star representative, right? I mean, you. I, I saw a tweet which pointed out something absolutely crazy to me. If you look at the ERA leaders in the American League and which one of, and which guys in the American League uh, out of out of their starting pitchers made the all-star roster. You've got the guy ranked first in ERA. You've got the guy ranked second in ERA. It goes all the way up to, I think, eighth in ERA. Those top eight are all in. And then Michael Lorenzen, who ranks 28th in the American <laughs> League among qualified starters in ERA, is just bizarrely in the game. And I don't know, if you're a Tigers fan, does it really improve the all-star experience because you might get to see Michael Lorenzen you know, get a couple outs late, late in that game next Tuesday. I don't know. And even last year, like for Diamondbacks fans with Joe Mantiply, I think he was having a better season uh, than, than Michael Lorenzen is, is having this year. Mantiply yeah. to sub three ERA he was having a good year. So I, I think that situation's maybe a little bit different, but I think if you're doing it for the fans, Sean, I think you ultimately just want to serve the fans by putting the best possible product on the field. Um, so yeah, that's, 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 that's just me. Yeah, no, that, that's completely fair. I really think it just depends on, I mean, I ultimately think on what depends on what kind of fan you are, right? Like if you're a more casual fan who really only knows your team and, sure. and the goal of this is to kind of grow the game, like um, then, yeah, I, I think it makes sense to have someone from every team. But if this is ultimately to serve the best interest of baseball, then yeah, you 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 definitely just need to put the best players in there. Um, and I think diehard baseball fans would probably look at it the same way. Uh, Elizabeth says, I only watch the all-star game to see the D-backs. So, to see, yeah, point, so there's definitely fans like that. that, that that's yeah. the thing. And, and I, I don't think any, any kind of fan is more valid than the other, obviously. Right. So, um, and, and I, I'm not going to lie like that. That's definitely, especially when I was younger, like that was the kind of fan I was too. Like I was really just watching to see my guys or, or, or certain guys, what have you. So, um, I, it, yeah, it, it completely makes sense. I, I, I think like Derek is suggesting the the other argument. Uh, this is a more interesting conversation, or not more interesting conversation, but a a, a fascinating conversation to me. Like, is there should, should there be a limit? Because that that that's where I think you more get guys who don't deserve to be in the All Star game. Is yeah. when teams just kind of get overloaded, like you see 
with the Blue Jays and the Braves. Yeah, it's a it's a fair point. I mean, I I I feel like you shouldn't have to have a limit because uh if if any team has eight representatives like the Braves do, something went wrong in the selection process. Like you shouldn't need you shouldn't yeah. need like some artificial limit in order to uh in order to change that. Uh, there there are guys that were selected this year for the Braves that clearly did not deserve the opportunity. That's that's the bigger problem in my mind. 